us, everybody. Like, guys, we have to go. Guys, let's go. Grab your bags. We have to. Yeah. And guys, Be early. Hello everybody and welcome back to Fifi Sense, the show where we take you behind the scenes on what happens in the theatre and film industry. I'm your host Kemani and here to talk about it with me is none other than, none other than, the great Desmond Dennis. Oh, well, yeah, I said to me. <laughs> <laughs> the great? The great. We, we receive. Yeah, uh, we receive. Right. So we've prepared Working a, towards little, it. a little intro for you. <clears throat> <clears throat> so ladies and gentlemen. Desmond Dennis is a performance artist and content creator. Also, an award-winning actor featured in the Netflix action series Luke Cage. Also, also, he is heavily involved in the local theater and film industry, working in capacities such as writer, director, actor, like sound technician, lighting technician, stage manager. That's just like, it is the tip, the tip, the tip, the tip, right? So. <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, 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 Desmond. Thank you so welcome much for having me. Sense. Yes, Come on, we'll so, go good. ladies and gentlemen, of course, I'm going to ask you to subscribe. If you're not subscribed, like the video, share it to some friends, and get the video out there, right? Right. All right, so here we go. Desmond, mm. per tradition, here on the show, we Jesus, have... tradition, wow. We, <laughs> we have, uh, it, sometimes it's would you rather, sometimes it's this or that, mm -hmm. this time it's this or that, and the this or that's for you today are poetry or music in terms of what in terms of what i like to do for Just fun like or overall, which what do i prefer like, yeah which one you prefer overall. all right so because of what i do mm -hmm. i'd have to say poetry but when i'm in my downtime it would be music which is why i'm asked but all right, let me let me of... let me put more restrictions on it if one were to disappear forever which one you do you keep Poetry or music? Based on what music does for me, mm -hmm. I'd say that, but I create poetry. Oh. So that weird for me. Even yeah. that weird for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But I, I would choose music as well. Yeah. All right, so here's another one The pool or the beach? Beach, man. Beach, 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 beach. Pool? What that? It's a pool for me, no. ladies and gentlemen. Pool? Why? Pool. I don't like salt water on my eyes and my skin. But you don't have to go in there water. Sometimes. So Mm. Sometimes the Why beach. Why people go beach and just stand up and look for underwater? Watch. I don't. It's in the experience. Mm. Like you don't have to always go in the water. For me, um, maybe it's that whole poetry thing. It's poetic it's to go po and stand, stand there and gaze upon yeah. the marvel that is the ocean, which the is sand. the beauty of God's work. I'm... Listen, go go to the <laughs> beach. Listen, take. I said it first. Go to the beach. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel for going in the water, just find a quiet spot and watch. Just take in everything. It's the most peaceful thing. <sighs> when you're there at the pool, you have restrictions. You have, you know, it, you already feel boxed in. You can only go from here to here. When you're there at the beach, you can walk up and down. You can kick you can stone. Walk the pool. You can look stone everything. There the pool. Brother, don't even. I'm, do, I'm saying. No. Beach. I'm saying. Okay. Beach. Pool. Yeah. I respect. Respectfully, mm -hmm. acknowledge your mm -hmm. difference in opinion, but mm -hmm. beach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, fashion or just like regular dressing? Just is it like full on dress up, like I'm gonna look good, or is it just like you know, like simple, sim simple. Where did that question it from? Where did that question from? To me, because it's because <laughs> you're literally these questions seem mm -hmm. to be. Pulling at the two sides. I feel like I, I'm Aquarius, but I have a Gemini personality in that. The signs, ladies. No. The signs. <laughs> Jesus, ladies. Let me and tell gentlemen. you. Oh, good. And man. no, I stand in my Aquarius nature, but <sighs> these questions are diametrically opposed because it depends. It really just depends on my mood mm. and sometimes it's functionality. So, like, if I go somewhere where I need to look a certain way, mm -hmm. I go dress up. Mm -hmm. And there are also times when we need to go somewhere and look decent and me don't feel it. So like for the past couple of months, um, I mean, the industry has slowed down, but whenever there are gigs or whatever, maybe last year, if I have a performance to do, I go dress up for the performance. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But for this year, literally, 
all the performances that I've been to, and some of them I have been for corporate, I put on a t-shirt, my shorts, and slippers. I've never done that. Slippers, <laughs> me tell you that's, something. That's literally my entire ghetto. T-shirt, shorts, <laughs> slippers. You get what I mean? And all the time. The thing is that sometimes when you work with corporate, mm -hmm. you have to be careful how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. But I've not been in that space in terms of always feeling to do the do. You yeah, know what I mean? Sometimes yeah, yeah. you just want. And then the other thing is that when you reach the space, you know, yeah. say, I go for work. So when I go, I go in a costume same time and get ready for work. So in my head, I say, why am I going to dress up for the change? Mm -hmm. And people me not going to know it right now. A pandemic, I have asthma. I stay in my yard. Me na, you know them way there? So, asthma. Um, <laughs> so, both. so, both. Okay. Both. Regular for me. All right. So, Let's jump right into it. That's it. Wrap, wrap up the, 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 this or that. So we're jumping right into it. And before we... Not before. Because you said for corporate, mm -hmm. you know, you need to present yourself in, in such a way that, you know, I guess it makes you hireable or, or whatever the, the correct word is to use. So because we're looking at theater and film behind the scenes, one of those things is, you know, being able to market yourself and present yourself in a way that... So for me, who this is my get up, let's say 95% of the time, maybe mm -hmm. 98, 99.9 .9 actually. Am I like, <laughs> have I like put, put myself in a box where I have now become unmarketable? No, you have okay. not. That's the truth. Um, it's also a matter of understanding the type of um, clients mm -hmm. that you're engaging. You have... Um, spaces that you enter as a performer mm -hmm. where you have to honor their protocols. Yeah. So, for instance, you're going into a building by standard, you're, you're not, you can't turn up in your slippers yeah, yeah. because people are going to pray a no, certain way. And, you yeah. get what I mean? Um, so, you know that, no oh, pajamas. if this is <laughs> pajama, <laughs> pajama, you go? No, sir. You know that if you're going to see some type of people, mm -hmm. at base, you put on a nice long jeans, mm -hmm. no rip up, rip up, um, shoes. But in other spaces, yeah, shots and... they don't care. You get what I mean? Because yeah. they are truly um, there for your talent. If you get what I say. So mm -hmm. uh, it really just, uh, it's a matter of understanding who you're, you're playing to and who you're trying to engage. Because some are definitely... You have to be that, and some you have to. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So okay. Uh, the last question we talked about was fashion versus regular, and I had mentioned you had mentioned that you know some days is full on dress up, mm -hmm. other days is t shirt, shorts, slippers. Slippers, I swear. And I mentioned that that is genuinely my get up at the moment, right? Yeah. Like for those who know me. <laughs> this is what I have on. It's true. All the time. A t-shirt, shorts, and slippers. Because I'm comfortable. I don't like pants. Pants pants make me uncomfortable. So, does that put me in, a, in, a, in an unemployable or unmarketable box? Is what not unemployable, not unmarketable. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of understanding who you're playing to. Who's mm -hmm. your audience? Who's your target? Because just like them, I look for people, you know, to pull onto their teams. You have to be looking to teams that you want to join. To join, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So... You have certain people um, who are certain, you know, groups, organizations who prefer um, a certain type of look. So they prefer the formal into casual the type. Posh. You know? Um, so you know that if you're going to do something and you're hoping to represent their brand, mm -hmm. you have to, at base, be in a certain amount of clothes. So you can turn up to the people and place in a slippers or shorts. And you have some people who are a lot more relaxed because they're more in, in they're more interested in the talent mm -hmm. and they understand the process. Yeah. And for me, it's all about process. My process into getting into character takes a while. So for me, there are some days where I just know, say, I don't want to dress all the way up because when I get there, I'm going to tear all of it down to build back up the character, mm -hmm. to break that down, to put back that on. It's too much. So a lot of the projects that I've been on lately, yeah. I've just... Grab that t-shirt, you know, shorts, slippers. Because when I get there, me I tell the security good morning. Me I go straight to the bathroom. Me I get ready and go up and stand by. Me no need no. That takes a while. And my process. I've take performed a while. with Desmond twice. When Desmond <laughs> Desmond gets to the show early, 
Esmond goes in front of the mirror, pulls up his seat, puts out his kit, sits down there, and does his thing. And that takes a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that takes it's not a even while. Exaggerating. It's a whole process. It's a whole thing. And wait, but that you just mentioned, all right, so we get that one, it's a matter of um, who, who is hiring you, it's a matter mm -hmm. of comfort and, you know, all of them things. But you mentioned, you talk about getting into character, the process of getting into character. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in hearing how you get into character. It, yeah, I will tell you how I get into character. It's, it's a lot less interesting, I think, <laughs> personally. But not I, less interesting, but it's for, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for upcoming actors who are potentially watching this, or you know, people who don't know the world from like the creative standpoint, I just mentioned that it takes ages for him to get into like you know makeup and and costume and you know get into the groove yeah. to go on stage. I want to know now the six week. Um, rehearsal process because that's what that's traditional what Typically, it is right yeah. yeah so six week rehearsal process from you get the script to know which character you're going to do yeah to the first day of opening show how do you how do you develop that character I mean how do you go from Desmond to is it was it was it it was Tom was and Bob Alf? the last time yeah. yeah and then in in um Tom and Bob in the book in the novel or play To Kill a Mockingbird and the King at whose name I don't remember. Alonzo. Alonzo. I was uh, about to say Alfonso. <laughs> <laughs> Not Alfonso. I, I don't know why Alfonso was. <laughs> so King Alonso in the Shakespeare play <laughs> The Tempest. The Tempest. So those are the two shows I worked. I had the honor of working with 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 Desmond on, and I got to see his process. I will. Like, I got to see the post show, the pre. Yeah. What am I saying? Come on. Man. The process. The pre show the process. Right before you go on stage, I want to know now the six week build up to that. Uh, well, first of all, it don't always take six weeks. At Jamaica with it. Sometimes you get a call from a director, and it's two week, it's three week, whatever oh, yeah. it is. But my process typically involves certain core things, regardless of the, the length of time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to first reason with my director. So I usually don't start any work until I know what my director wants. Um, just because I direct too, and I understand that a lot of what the audience gets at the end of the day is their perception of the text. Mm -hmm. So before me do nothing, before I make any offering, I want to know where their mind is at. So I have a few conversations with them Ask them, how you see this? How you feeling? Which direction? What's the style you're going for? Mm -hmm. All of those things. And then now when them say X, I take my script and I start to do research. So I read the script maybe two or three times um, to get a feel of how everybody in that world operates. Um, to see where my character fits in, then I start to read. People, mm -hmm. I read a lot. Um, I do. Especially for... <laughs> Is it... What? We're going to we'll go back to that. Um, yeah, so I read a lot. So if, for instance, it's a period piece, so like when we do Tempest, mm -hmm. you know, Shakespearean style, you have to go, how them used to talk, why and how their language would have worked in their scenario. So I may read upon that, I may read upon how them used to look. Um, and that's also why I look the way I look now, people. I decided to grow out my hair because it makes I like me... I don't know why you do that. I mean, it suits you, but I don't know why you do it. Let me tell you why. I grew up my hair because I style my hair differently for each for of my characters. Year, yeah. You get what I mean? It's yeah. one of the things I do. It helps with my process. When I'm able to look and see how the hair fit into the da, 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 it helps me. And when I have more hair on my head, it gives me more leverage to transition. So with my hair at the length that it's at, and I'm going to go longer, um, I can be anything from a gangster to somebody from a 1960s jazz type, you know, noir film type. Mm -hmm. I can go 1912. I can be modern day. I can do anything physically in terms of transformation. I don't have much problem. The mm -hmm. only issue I would have is if my hair need for below. And my hair is so good because I have what the girl them call 4C, 4, the four one C, down four at the C. end down there. So I have the one there. So when you wash... And you tie it down, it shrinks. It shrinks down. So cold. I don't yeah. need to trim it. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. a part of my process, the physicalization. And that comes after the reading. Um, and then when you reach um, rehearsals now, it's more of the negotiation with the director. If I make an offering and the director don't like it, I simply yeah. clarify what they need. Yeah. But I like to 
offer a lot of things. Yeah. And if a director says cut, the next time I do it, I'm going to do it different until them, them feel, feel something. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like to play with my other, my co-stars. You know what I mean? So me like see what them offer and see how that um, affect the whole sequence, whatever the case may be. And then leading up to show now, you know, say when costumes start reach, you have to make more adjustment because based on how your clothes look, it all help shape how you move in the clothes. Mm -hmm. And that's another critical part of my process, how my characters move. Um, I'm a very physical actor and a lot of the internal come when we understand how they move and how they see themselves in the world. So, yeah, that's a pretty much my process. Reading, making offerings, figuring out how they look on the outside and then digging into the objectives once I do my homework, I do a whole heap of homework. Mm -hmm. um, find where each line I say, how much beat in each line, how much things we can communicate in each beat and working that through over the course of the time. Okay, so I've summarized all of that into know what the director wants, research. Research. Long 4C here. <laughs> <laughs> to put it in simpler terms. Yeah, was that yeah. yeah. pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Wait, before, before I move on to... You said you said you're a very physical actor. Before I go on to that, because I have a question about there's something I want to know about that. For me, though, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. it is quite unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you the honest truth, to not be an avid or, or you know, a very good, no, not very good. I'm a good reader, I just don't like to read. Mm -hmm. In the creative space, it's kind of a disadvantage. But, but, how I, you know, get into character, how I, you know, characterize my various characters for characterization. Profound. Is, <laughs> is I look for video clips. Ah, I, um, but that's the research. Yeah, yeah, I know, you know, that, that, yeah, that's it for me. That's, so I get my research from videos, not from um books or stories mm -hmm. or, in, or news or whatever it is so how i get into character is that, like i mentioned i, I watch uh, videos mm -hmm. videos video 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 content is what i consume to get into to, character right. so for for the tempest i watched parts of the caribbean nice i looked at videos you know how pirates usually behave how people of that era usually behave you know it's it's kind of uh, what's that? I don't remember what the perfect, the, prop, the proper name is for that that era, but that's how I personally get into the character. Elizabethan. I was going to yeah. say that, but I don't want to to yeah, not be correct. That, right? yeah, so that's why I never said that. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I get into character. Videos, audio clips. I can hear it. I can see it. That's how I do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So reading, reading for the research doesn't work for me. So I and watch that's it. fine, you know, because mm -hmm. the truth is, guys, your process hinges on you and what works for you and i think mm -hmm. that's the thing i want a lot of people to understand don't think that because there are quote-unquote rules to doing it or there are quote-unquote best practices to doing that you have to follow them to the t to what the t, you're yeah. trying to do is get to a stage where you understand yourself enough that you can allow for your director and yourself to come up with something else in time Into, for your show. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So don't mm -hmm. think that, oh, because me read, you have to read. No, and I say it works. Yeah. If a video do your thing, a video do your thing. Here's why I can't do video. My mind always in an overdrive. So if I watch mm -hmm. a video, my subconscious, I go take it up, and what I see from the video is going to affect my physical play. Okay. So okay, I like okay. to just consume the written so my imagination yeah, so do you the work yourself there. build build yeah, you, because so if, the, you read it and then you know the, what you read is a skeleton and then right. you desmond puts flesh Fle nerves yeah. bones but if you watch pirates if you watch pirates what up no you're gonna see me come out there as johnny there <laughs> <laughs> and that's gonna be a problem because yeah. that's a that's yeah. a um, plagiarism it in is, my yeah, head yeah. you know what i mean like you can't take another actor's performance, performance. so i mean around the wrist there because of how my brain work yeah 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 it makes sense so you said you're a very physical actor or performer. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not like I have, me personally, before I ask you, I have damaged my ankles, oh. my knees, Whoa. and my neck Whoa. for a performance once. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the most damage I've done. Mm -hmm. Physical, I've, I've done no mental damage because I have my come down routine. Want to talk that about is that critical. as well? Yes. Want to talk about that as well? So I've, I, so far there has been no mental damage to a character for that me. You're aware of that I'm, because I've been, I've been worried, Desmond. 
Desmond. There are times when I feel like I am not me. Which is, right. y- you know, it comes with the territory, guys. Yeah. So there are days when I'm just sitting down there and, I, you know, I start talking or doing something. And then after a while, I'm like, tough. What? <laughs> you know? But that's, 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 that's something that I like, like to call residue. Oh, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, most yeah, of, that's, yeah that's, that's what that's, I call that. Because yeah, that's, that's sometimes, what it would be, though. guys, yeah. sometimes, and it, it just depends on how much you go into your character for a show. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the character then linger with me after the show. Mm-hmm. So, like, mm-hmm. me do a show named Garvey, um, Garvey the Musical, written by, written and directed by Michael Holgate. Mm-hmm. And in that show, I was in like a squat walk for the, sh- the entire show. That was my physical yeah. thing. Yeah. So, for the whole run of that show every night, mm-hmm. once your ears say half hour to show me, start walk up and down, hunched, yeah. pretty much. A to squat. get into it. Yeah. Right. And what would happen is after the, sh- and I also did this thing. Because it's mystical, it's God, it's spiritual, you know? So. In my head, and when we discussed it with the director, he didn't want movement that looked too human. Yeah. So may I do this little thing, and two weeks after the show done, me sit down a reason with somebody, and my finger them I just give, start go so. Yeah. I may say, <laughs> oh, <I> keep. <laughs> you know them way that's like you have to be conscious, conscious. to grab back yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. fine, and also not fine because not sure, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So what is the so I, I mentioned ankles, knees, and neck. What's the most physical damage you've attained for a role or show or performance or whatever? If it's the most. Mm-hmm. Ah, do I tell the world this? That's up to you. I don't know. All right. So. But tell the safest one. I don't know. I mean, I just got to be honest with it. Yeah. I mean, it can't change. No, it happened. Yeah. All right. So what happened is I lost a half of my front tooth. Oh. Yeah. I was... Yeah. <laughs> so what happened is, um, in a rehearsal, mm-hmm. we're not rehearsing on a, a wooden floor. It's tiled. And what happened is that there's a moving prop yeah. that another actor's in charge of. And guys, this is why I take rehearsals very seriously. And why I am very keen on blocking. If you make one wrong move, everything falls. Falls apart, yeah. And for me, safety and health in play is probably paramount. Like, you're going to do, do the antics and da da but I'm very big on safety. So when you have to know what ankle, let me feel it for you. Yeah. But what happens is that we have a moving part, the guy's in charge of it, and he missed his cue in trying to catch up to the scene. He runs hits the prop over and because I'm on the floor, mm-hmm. the thing, the prop fell on me, my mm-hmm. head went to the tile, I'm a feet look out. God was so gracious to me guys. Yeah. In that when my tie when my, my teeth hit the tile, it was a clean split. So when I went to the dentist, they did a procedure which allowed for them to and thankfully they found a tooth or a half a tooth mm-hmm. that um perfectly matched Matching. the colour. So people wouldn't know that a half of my front tooth is not mine. One half like white w- and then Yeah, because it split clean. Like... There was no nerve damage, no anything mm-hmm. like that, which was yeah. good. Um, so that I would say is my biggest loss. Yeah. Oh, and another time, I... Just some error in communication. I put a, sub- a makeup substance on my body that wasn't supposed to be on skin and I got burns. Oh. So oh. well we're through that now. I wouldn't show you because it's weird. <laughs> but I got burns from yeah. um, a wrong substance. Yeah. So okay. always ask what's going on your skin and what is going to happen. You get mm-hmm. what I mean? Say? Mm-hmm. Cause now I have to be going through the process of fixing my skin which I like to keep bare as you know because yeah. your body is a canvas as an actor so I not ever do tattoos and name something there so I know I have scars what I'm not supposed yeah. to have yeah yeah mm-hmm. all right so I would like to apologize mm-hmm. because when you were rehearsing for To Kill a Mockingbird you had a very nice bead chain yeah 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 yeah, uh, yeah. That's fine. I've seen the video a couple of times. I was like, oh. 
because I know how I feel about my yeah, man. my chains. Yeah. I have these. I've had these on for like three, four years consistently. Mm -hmm. But I've seen you in yours all the time, right? And then for us to be in rehearsal, and then we were going through a blocking. I think it was a fighting scene. Yeah, it was. And you know, I grappled him, and then he, you know, threw out of the grapple, and then I just hear Shh. the beads of his necklace just bouncing all over the place. Yeah. I felt bad. I felt really bad. You know, it's been two years, but I'm now apologizing. Now you apologize. <laughs> it's fine though, because <laughs> if, if me up real, you don't know. Yeah. For because true. like for one, moon there. You wouldn't there right now. Yeah, for sure. But the other thing is, guys, I'm very big on energy and how mm. energy affects my processes and how energy affects creativity. So I don't hold on to anything. Say, so could I do me something? Mm. And you just give me two days to just kind of wind down, process everything, because mm -hmm. I'm very internal. So I have to go through everything first, see how yeah. I feel about it. If I see you the next time, I promise you I don't remember, because I move on to a next to thing. Because yeah. the chain, I never, like, it was very sentimental, like, special chain. Um, it was a gift, actually, from Auntie Debbie, big up Auntie Debbie. Um, but it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, like casualties of war, yeah. it happens. Yeah. So we move on. You're good. Are there any idols, inspirations, tor shons? 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 Let's go with shons. Tor shons. Tor shons. Inspirate tor shons. Yeah. 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 So who are those people? Like who, who did you look to before you actually came into the space heavily? Like you saw them and you're like, <sighs> I don't know what that is, but it's something. You saw them and you went, no, it's it's weird because I think I was in the space before I was able to acknowledge, acknowledge it. Acknowledge anybody? Because me, I watch mm. plays like my my bigger my older brother um, used to from the days with a VCR the old mm -hmm. tape, the cassette tape. Them, mm -hmm. my older brother would bring home plays. Big up Kino, my older brother would would bring home plays. Um, so I was watching Roots plays from maybe seven. Mm. Um, so I knew all of, and it, because we're in Clarendon, you don't have access to plays unless there's a tour. Yeah. So I would have to wait until, you know, the play get recorded and it come out on the cassette, da, 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 da. Like So I knew CDs, everybody. Man. So when, if you're going to say inspiration, I would have to say all of the people who were active in that time. Mm -hmm. The people, them, the Olivers, Uncle Volier, rest in peace. Um, all of those people, when Lime Tree Lane, when Royal Palm was a thing. Um, when tracks was a family. thing, all of those people were people I, I would yeah. look at. And I think because I recognize they looked like me, I guess in mm -hmm. terms of you see black people on TV, you know, my head may say, wait, I wish I could have on TV, but I need to process it like yeah. deeply. Deep. But from a perspective of now, who do I look to know when I'm creating, for instance, or if I'm doing work? Mm -hmm. Um, Muda Afi say, People like Michael Holgate, who's my mentor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Muda Afise, Delia Harris, who's my mentor. Mm -hmm. um, Carolyn, Both of them I, are putting out great work. Right? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I've, yeah, seen, yeah. I've seen Mr. Michael, Holgate mm -hmm. and Delia Harris' work for like right, like right now, right, right in the past like two, three years. It's like good stuff. And that's the thing, like both of, both of them good stuff. continue I'm to put out that, work. I'm proud of the work that's coming out right now. Listen to me, man. They put out work mm -hmm. consistently consistently high standard um but i cannot say who it is me I acknowledge as you know the, who contributes most the to my one. process mm -hmm. because i am literally a product of everybody who's ever interacted with me so yeah, would i still true. have to acknowledge true, 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 true. caroline allen you Definitely still have to true. acknowledge ebony you still have to acknowledge ryan mclean my director from quilt you have to acknowledge all of those yeah, people because have i've learned each of them has added you know, it's value blocks, added. stepping stones, or each of them has added to peace. Peace, Precisely. Peace, peace, peace. So everybody yeah. will ever interact with yeah. me, we don't have enough time. Me love you, me appreciate you, I am because you are. Yeah. yeah. Even if we pass up on the street on bump shoulders, yeah. and be like, oh, I'm eternal look for you, like, that's a walk, that's a character walk. Precisely. Yeah, that's a character walk, yeah. So, all of that, I am, like, I can, I can attest to that. It makes sense. I've, I've thought about it and I've agreed with that. With the fact that, like, each of these people have added peace, 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 mm -hmm. peace, peace. But I want to go back to Dale Harris mm -hmm. and um, Michael Holgate. Mm -hmm. As you know, I, I'm not sure if you know, there's a pandemic going on. Me very know. Okay. Me very, guys, my asthmatic, so. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Uh, for me personally, it started right in the middle of when I had a show. And that show was cancelled. And that was... Weren't we in that show? Yeah. At and the same been... show, we were there the day. And guys, we, we were doing a, a show yeah. when the pandemic hit Jamaica. Like the middle of the show. Literally. And they're like, The show reached half time. Send and then we got... Send back the students. And Jesus. kids, ah. the chaos. Everybody like, guys, we have to go. <laughs> guys, let's go. Grab your bags. We have to. Yeah. And guys... The early... The early reaction to COVID, there was the, it was the, yo, the mass hysteria. Yo, when we left Everybody the running. theater the day, mm. the roads were empty. Me literally feel like me in a um, post-apocalyptic like yeah. movie. <laughs> <zombie> Nobody in the the road. I mean, yeah. I said, what is this like in the space yeah. of two hours? But but that was that first for me. I've I've seen you. You're still working. I know. But for me, that's the last time I touched a stage. Oh wow! With a character. Mm-hmm. Or with like a, from then since then I've done like photography, videography, I've directed, I've written, but I haven't touched That's the stage, stage or performance, yeah. otherwise than like the show. This show I haven't been in front of the camera doing any like real work, any character. Not let me say, let me not say real work. Yeah, because you've been doing like, real yeah, work, doing just real that work, but just that type of work, yeah. stage, um, performing, acting. I haven't since then. I haven't touched it. But I've seen you doing the most is 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 the best I can put it. So like. So COVID not really, COVID not really trouble you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The fact that I'm out there in the space doing work now is um, perhaps the biggest proof mm. of the effect of COVID on me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, depression. Mm. Mounds and mounds of depression. Bouts and bouts of depression. And what happened was, um, as I said, I'm very internal. So while I'm going through my downs. Um, I'm talking to myself and I'm working through because the other thing too is I understand how depression affects me. So I'm always able to backtrack and see what the trigger is in each case. Mm -hmm. And after a time, I realized that um, whenever I'm down and I get a performance, it lifts me. Mm -hmm. Right? When COVID happened, the industry shut down. Guys, there's no work. Completely shut right down. The industry is shut down. Right down. Um, And in that time... I felt that I had to do something. So now you're saying that, you know, you see me doing my thing, da 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 It's because I had no choice. I was backed into a corner and I yeah. knew that if I stayed down, mm-hmm. probably nobody wouldn't be able to lift me up. And yeah. so, you know, just to give you some context, the first time I ever performed would have been perhaps in, you know, basic school performance, da 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 you're performing Christmas recital like Christmas, and da 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 in grade three, they had a thing where grade four and three would combine and you do performances for class. Mm-hmm. And we used to love how when we class do a thing, how people respond. People used to feel good. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do something for people at Christmas. COVID was happening. Industry was shut down. I needed to do something, something. to get out of the funk. Me introverted, but me said me have to do something. So mm-hmm. I create a YouTube channel. Yeah. And that's pretty much what I have been yeah. doing to stay sane because there's no work to do. So we make opportunities for work. We'll we link the YouTube channel in the description so you can go watch it. It's funny stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's good stuff. But yeah, so it's it's a matter of to get it, get yourself out of the rut. Mm-hmm. You find something else. We can't go on stage. We can't um, deal with like a physical audience. Right. So what do we do? You put on a, a, a YouTube a one man show. show. There we go. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you, you you do what it is that you have to do. Um, that makes that makes sense. I I really. Mm, yeah, that's, and that's, then that's good stuff. You I, just have I a piggyback off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Just find find your footing in the in the new new space. In basically. the new uh, pretty yeah, much, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I've had to do to just keep saying. I'm really just mm-hmm. guys. I'm really out here. Just I like, try to keep saying till the industry open. Like, Take your vaccines. Keep safe so we can work. Please, may I beg on do. Yeah. Do. So yeah. many people have like caught COVID on sets, I've realized. Really? Mm. Well, I guess my fortunate. I yeah, actually Me I've too. heard Me as well. Me as well. I you caught? No, 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 I haven't. I haven't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but the, the truth is, as creatives, because we know the impact it's having on us, mm-hmm. a lot of the times we're more careful on sets and stuff. So yeah. If you hear about it, it would have been like some isolated cases. Yeah. If you go with me, I said, but we are trying to keep safe. Yeah, so, so it's just a matter of keeping safe. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I've heard about, I think, three cases. Three. Three people who I know and familiar with. One director, um, an actor, and I think not. Uh, two actors and a director. Mm. I have spoken to and they have said, oh, they caught COVID on set. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, regardless of... Because, I mean, you can, I never, mean it, yeah. you can never truly be 100% And that's safe. true because... Right. And the truth is, guys, if you're if you're going to be interacting with people, there's mm -hmm. a chance. Yeah, there's you always the risk. Once you go to a road and you see somebody and the person pass like arm's length, yeah, there's it's a, a chance, possibility, right? Yeah. Which is why what's been going out is that as as best as you can, social distance, sanitize. sanitize. Every, so, for instance, you see, because when we're asthmatic, mm -hmm. when COVID start like the first wave. I literally shut down. So I would not go out into any physical space yeah, that I was not still, certain I'd be alone. Still not gonna, yeah, you get still what I mean? Gonna, yeah. Guys, I'm paranoid, wicked. So my friends will tell you that I wear my mask like everywhere. Oh. Um, I'm a wipe down everything. I have some, the big wipes, them walk with them everywhere. I mean, I have a couple buckler um, and sanitizer. I'm always, I use my side, if I touch nothing, especially in a public space, if I go out, is that you just have to do what you need to the personal responsibility. If you know that, especially if you have family members who might get sick, you have to do what you need to do to yeah. make sure that everybody in a year space is good. And that's the only way we'll defeat this thing. It's a matter of us understanding that as a we community, have to, we have to work on it together. Yeah. Think about when Olympics come, everybody get up a halfway tree be pot cover, da, da, da. we have to take that same approach mentally. We have to say, yo, to get rid of the thing, sanitize the people, them say. The people, them say, wash your hands. The people, them say, wear your mask. So you just have to do what you have to do so that we can get rid of it. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Get the vaccine. It will help. Like, you, you know, catch it. You can catch it because, obviously, in a hundred percent in terms of effective because the, the virus coming like a superpower. The virus up create new versions of itself. So obviously the vaccine isn't going to always be like a hundred percent, but what it will do is it will limit the impact it has on your body in the off chance that you catch the thing. So do what you need to do. Go get your vaccination. Me? From then say blitz. I'm going to turn up in that line all day from nine o'clock till mm. after four. Get the first one and then I go, go back and get my second one. So I'm fully. Oh, you get the second one. I get my second one and after that, I still limit crowd. Yeah. Little space. One and two people, if so much. Do what we have to do, guys. Please. All right. So there's COVID. There is um, the change of content that people like to consume. Yeah. There are, there are all these things. One bag of things. So anybody who is late to the party, which is the performing arts yeah. and film and theater and everything. Well, if you're late, you know, it's fine. We welcome you same way. You know, if you think you belong somewhere else, you don't. This is where you need to be. So for those people who are late, right? And they're just now coming to the light and they're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, this is where I want to be. What are you going to say to them? What I would say is have some serious conversations with yourself first and know definitively that this is what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Um... This is for everybody who wants who to get wants into to, the, yeah, the to get into performing the performing arts space. Yeah. Um, if you if you think you want to do it, you have to be certain. And I'm going to say this because there are a lot of challenges in the industry. Just because of access to space, and especially now with COVID, there's a lot of limitations. If you mm -hmm. don't know for sure, say so you want to do it, plan out your thing first and know say so yeah, at this me I gonna do. Once you're certain you're going to do it. Read, watch things, get better at your craft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be disciplined. Take yourself seriously so people can take you seriously. If you think of it like a thing where we hate what people do, um, oh, you do the acting thing? No, I'm an actor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. It's we have, have to, you see, them time. little micro something that oh. those are the things that like manifest in thing. a different way. It's not a little thing because you don't say to a lawyer, oh, you do the lawyer thing, you do mm. the accounts thing, you do the doctor thing, the medicine thing. No. Yeah. You say, are you a doctor? It's the same thing. You have to respect your craft and For others force respect people well. to respect your craft. So nobody can come to me and say, oh, you do the acting thing. I carry them same time. No, I'm an actor. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So change your approach. That's a one. Be disciplined. Work hard. 
be consistent and consistently perform with excellence. Yes. Once you do that, people are going to want to be a part of what you are doing. Those are the things I would encourage you to do. And know yourself. If you know mm -hmm. yourself, you're comfortable and people like authenticity. Mm -hmm. So be a true self and you're good. That's it though. It, 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 it's, this is the thing about this. The, I'm glad you bring up that word, authenticity. Even for this show and for many other things I've been a part of, I much prefer authenticity. Authentic, I, if it's yeah. not authentic, I don't, I don't like it. I've seen TV shows. I've seen um, whatever it is. You know, the content I consume, mm -hmm. if it's not authentic or if it doesn't feel authentic, I, I, I lose interest maybe like the first, In the, the yeah. first, first episode. And the thing is, you know, is, Jamaica people, quick. So them are see if you're, yeah. if you're being fake, they a Jamaican just, is going to call you out. So they they just... Fake. Just do mm -hmm. what you need to do, which is be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Be you. Be true to you. Be you. Yeah. Desmond Dennis, 2021. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what are... What have you gained from the industry? Otherwise, then, you know, notoriety, the, the, the skills to put on various characters. Just like... Like, you know, kind of sell it. Sell, sell the performing arts to the same people you just gave advice on how to become a performance artist. I think one of the things that people do, or perhaps two, two of the main things I would say is that when you're in it, um, it, it, it broadens your scope of knowledge. Mm. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, because for instance, as an actor... you have to do actor, your research and pick up, pick up from different exactly. characters. Yes, exactly. So... For instance, I had an experience where I was directing a group of lawyers, mm. um, young, young or lawyers in training, and they were surprised at how well I could keep up with their legalese. Mm -hmm. um, their and that's because, and yeah, that's because in doing the show, I had to do a lot of reading. So, me know what I go on. So, we can keep up with you so I can communicate with you. Being in the performing arts industry helps with your communication skills. Um, it helps with understanding people because it's driven by that understanding of people mm -hmm. yeah when we act we're taking on different personalities and to be true to that personality you have to be able to acknowledge who the character is as a person so you can borrow into that you get what i mean so it opens you gain a wealth of knowledge in terms of the different fields that your characters are in mm -hmm. it helps you with understanding people's psychology it helps with emotional awareness um and it helps in terms of entertainment, like enter the entertainment value, the educational value, all of those things. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of sustaining our culture. We keep our stories in our plays. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if it is that we want to ensure that the future generations know what we were doing, uh, in our own play, we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So those yeah. are the benefits, I would say. Um, understanding people and it helps with community building. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I think I think I think that's good. Yeah, that's good. I will forever, forever follow your work. I Much will respect. forever hold you in high esteem. Okay, so Much respect. for me, it's for people who people who I've worked with that know. Not not you know people who you see look up to like oh my god, not them. People who I've worked with, there is Desmond. Some other people whose name I can't remember right now. Some other people whose name I can't remember right now. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate I'm that. Say. Listen, when I say you are good, I mean you are good. You are probably I one of the that. best in Jamaica at this very moment. I appreciate that. Thank yes. you so much. Yeah, I, you are somebody I look up to in oh, the space. It's, it's, it's the truth. Because when I, when I watch you perform, when I watch you prepare, when I watch you do all the things, I'm just, just there like, wow. <laughs> you know it's it's just like that really it's like that really and um really with that, that man. this has been the desmond dennis this has been few few cents oh, i've been your host kemani uh thank you for watching make sure you like share subscribe leave a comment there are so many gems across the video i want to see some of them in the comments just like just like join the conversation talk to us as we talk to you um like I said, check out his stuff. I'll link all of them in the description. His Instagram, his Twitter, his YouTube. He is... You know what this means? You know, you know what this means? When somebody say... <laughs> this? This is this one. So, um, yes guys, that's it. That's it for 50 cents. I've been Kemani. 
This has been Desmond. This has been Desmond. Yes, it has. Yeah. So I will see you guys next week.